Good morning. I'm Teresa Cruz, the new director of the National Center for Medical Rehabilitation Research at NIH. Thank you so much for joining us to be a part of the celebration of rehabilitation research. I particularly would like to thank Peter Thomas and Eddie field -Fote, who spoke earlier in this session. Um, I hope you enjoy all the talks today and tomorrow. Uh, please make sure that you visit the poster sessions as well as the exhibit hall and participate in conversations with your colleagues as much as possible. It's my pleasure to talk to you for just a few minutes about the future of rehabilitation research at NIH as I see it. So I'm a big fan of history. I think it's very important to look at uh, where we've been before we think about where we're going. Uh, Peter has already given a wonderful overview of the history of NCMRR, uh, but I would like to start with this photo of the first advisory board meeting, which met almost 30 years ago, and really acknowledge the work that these uh, researchers and advocates did in setting up the first um, rehab center, the uh, rehab center at NIH. Uh, we stand on their shoulders. Um, and I think it's important to look to their vision of, of what they were trying to accomplish, um, both and far, as far as including people with disabilities uh, in the research, as well as really focusing on function. So I want to acknowledge and thank them for their work. My philosophy as the director really focuses on three different areas. Uh, in which NCMRR is a leader, uh, both as far as resources, partnerships, and communication. So when I talk about resources, uh, we mainly think about the grant funding that we provide. Um, but it's also more than that, and I'll give you some examples of specific resources that we support. But I'd like to know from you all what kinds of mechanisms particularly um, are needed that we don't provide currently. You know, not every research project will fit nicely into an R01. And here I think we need to be creative about ways that we can be uh, more disruptive, um, more forward thinking in our research, and perhaps there are different mechanisms that NCMRR could provide to help usher those types of research projects in the door. So some specific research uh, resources we provide uh, are focused on junior investigators. We are very concerned about the pipeline of investigators in rehab research. So several years ago, we started the NCMRR Early Career Researcher Award. This is a large RO3 designed to help uh, PIs who are still early in their careers, less than seven years, um, collect pilot data to be competitive for that first R01, which is where we're hoping everyone gets to. Uh, we have recently issued a notice to extend the uh, eligibility period for an additional year to account for COVID-related delays. Uh, so please take a look at that funding opportunity announcement. The next due date is March. Uh, we also provide grant writing and mentoring programs uh, through the R25 mechanism. I would recommend that you visit um, and learn more about TIGER. Uh, there's information in the exhibit hall on both TIGER, which is Training and Grantsmanship and Rehabilitation Research, um, which is a wonderful program where you can go and spend uh, four or five days just working on your specific aims, meeting with mentors, uh, colleagues, and federal um, agencies. We also have the Rehabilitation Medicine Science TIST Training Program, which supports uh, physiatrists. We have a large, uh, newly minted uh, research infrastructure network. Uh, the six sites are listed here. They have an exhibit booth in the hall. I would encourage you to learn more about each of these there. Um, but these are resources for you. You are encouraged to contact them. Uh, take advantage of their state-of-the-art facilities, their webinars, um, their consultations, their pilot funding. Um, they are here to take your calls uh, and to help provide uh, expertise in rehabilitation research. 
Another example of a resource is common data elements. So common data elements, uh, particularly in clinical trials, make it easier to compare research studies and in some cases allow you to combine results. Uh, we have two ongoing efforts in the area of common data elements. Uh, the first is related to a federal interagency working group to standardize research <clears throat> standards, excuse me, in limb loss research. And uh, you should be seeing a request for information soon uh, to get your input on the work that this group has done so far. Uh, we also have a collaboration with NINDS um, neurological Disorders and Stroke, to develop new neurorehabilitation common data elements. Uh, and this is more of a community-led uh, endeavor, and I would like to acknowledge uh, Alan Heinemann and Noel Carlosi for their efforts in leading that uh, quite substantial working group. So partnerships are incredibly important to NCMRR. Um, we are a, a small group. Um, we do have limited resources, uh, and the way that we leverage those with partnerships, both within NIH as well as across the federal government, really allow us to spread rehabilitation research many, many, many times over um, compared to the um, budget we currently have um, and the work, um, the staff that we currently have. So I have a couple examples of, of partnerships that we participate in. The first one is an NIH partnership. So we are working with the Office of Disease Prevention as well as with NINDS in a Pathways to Prevention program. Uh, and here we're looking to inform physical activity guidelines for people who use wheelchairs. Um, this also involves several federal agencies, including AHRQ, who is our partner in developing a systematic review of the literature. Uh, and there's also several federal partners who helped inform the agenda for this workshop. Uh, it was supposed to be held in March. We've had to reschedule for December. So I do hope that you join us for that workshop um, and, the, uh, and continue to follow that program as uh, it concludes after the workshop. And I'd like to acknowledge both Joe Bonner and Lynn Jakeman for their work on that project. Uh, another example of a partnership is one between NIH uh, and CMRR and the Department of Defense with respect to a limb loss and preservation registry. Uh, this is a contract. This is a, a bit different than uh, most of the, the research funding that we do. Uh, it was awarded two years ago to the Mayo Clinic. And the focus here is on gathering data on the preservation efforts, surgery, rehabilitation, devices, and functional outcomes for people with limb loss or limb difference. Again, we bring in many other federal agencies uh, to help inform how we uh, proceed with this contract. Um, and again, this is our attempt to uh, provide resources via a, a partnership where we get a much larger outcome than our investment alone. The last thing I'd like to talk to you today about is communications. So NICHD has an absolutely wonderful communications office, and I would really like to highlight the science that our grantees are doing more. So we have several methods for doing that. Uh, press releases, for example. Uh, we can also highlight uh, particular resources, uh, research projects through our social media uh, streams. Um, and I like to communicate with all of you uh, through our rehabilitation research uh, newsletter, which comes out every couple weeks. Uh, NIH produces a lot of information, so I'd like to to pull out what's most important for you all. Um, but I think there are other ways that we could um, highlight the work that you do. Uh, our conferences are only every five years or so uh, on this scale, uh, but I do think that there are opportunities to highlight your work um, more frequently through things like lecture series. Uh, so keep that in mind for the future. So in conclusion, I wanted to show our most recent advisory board. 
Um, unfortunately, it's from May of 2019 uh, and not May of 2020. You know, COVID has certainly impacted um, many of the research projects that you all are working on. Um, you know, as, as Dr. Fauci says, uh, we don't make the timeline, the virus makes the timeline. I'm hoping that we will get together in person in May of 21, and I'll be able to get an update to this photo. Uh, but when we do get together, we will take that photo. Um, and if there is any group of people that knows how to adapt uh, and to function, uh, then it is certainly the rehabilitation community. So thank you so much. I'd like to thank the co-funders of this workshop, and uh, INDS, NIA, NIDCD, NCCIH. Thank you for your contributions. I'd like to thank the NCMRR Advisory Board who helped put together this agenda. Uh, the NIH staff, particularly the NIH Medical Rehabilitation Coordinating Committee, all of our speakers, attendees, uh, and of course the staff at NCMRR. So please enjoy the rest of the conference and I look forward to speaking to you. Thank you.